Today I've got some all new spring cottage decor for you. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own The I Was. Welcome back. The first will be a hanging flower basket. All right, I'm gonna have my little handy clippers here. This is the basket that I've thrifted and I have used this in other DIYs. This is an idea of the measurement, so you can use any type of a little basket with a handle that's flat. And this is what I've got. I've got some fern pieces. You can get all of your greenery from Dollar Tree if you would like. I've got some little wispy pieces and these beautiful irises. Perfect for spring. This blossom fern, I like the purple and white for this. We're gonna start by cutting everything apart. We're not gonna be plunking down a whole stem in there. We're just gonna cut them into pieces. Very easy to do. This one, however, I am going to leave on the pick just like it is for now, okay? And of course, I'm gonna pick the prettiest side to come outward, and then one side is definitely gonna be the back section. I'm gonna push these right down in the center and kind of spread them out a bit. You know how irises grow. So I wanna kind of give it, let it have that same look. These are plastic covered wire, so I'm just gonna bend these down. I got these at the thrift store, but you can get several different picks if you need to at Dollar Tree. It didn't have a tag, so I'm not sure where it originally came from. But I think Hobby Lobby right now has like 40% off maybe on their spring. Um, I'm not entirely sure, you just have to check. But don't pay full price, y'all. We don't do that, do we? All right, now this is the back side of the, the basket. And I'm just going to take the pieces off because there's so many in here. I'm going to take the pieces off that are in the back, pushing everything else through into the front so all that fullness is in the front. And then I'll be adding these back into here in the spots that I feel could use a little more thickness, I guess. A little more growth. So we're going to put those right in the front. So far, so good. And I'm just pushing these down in here. If this is something that you want to put on a covered porch, you could certainly do that. But you need to use glue to hold everything in place if you're going to do that. I like the idea of being able to use my baskets over and over. So I use very little glue when I have to. Otherwise, I don't use any glue for it. But most of my decor goes in the house anyway. All right, now here are the pieces of the beautiful little fern blossoms. And I'm going to pick those in here there. I actually did get these this year. So hopefully your store has some spring stuff out that uh, you can pick through. I chose the purple and white because I really love the beautiful irises in here. And I want to be sure that I continue that color all through it. And besides, it looks springy to me. Definitely something you could use at Easter as well. The only two colors in these picks I saw was solid white and purple and white, but there may be more options. I love them. So pretty. Again, trying to keep the focus on the front and not the back. And when I place them in the back, I'm going to push them through the handle so that they are kind of protruding into the front section. And now, of course, I've got to add some yellow. So maybe those of you who enjoy Mardi Gras might actually like this also because we've got some purple and some yellow and some green in here. I know if my sister's watching, she would probably be loving this. She lives in South Louisiana. In fact, she lives in Baton Rouge. So they're all up in the Mardi Gras spirit right now, as well as the people here that are in Mobile, Alabama. They're all getting ready and, and doing the fun stuff. I don't really do the Mardi Gras stuff, but I just never have, but I've been told it's a lot of fun. Okay, so continuing along with this spring bouquet, you can put on your door or put wherever you like it. I like to look at all sides and all directions to make sure that it is full and balanced all over, you know, meaning I don't want a bunch of holes or obvious blank spots in there. And look how lush and beautiful this looks. Now these little fern picks are actually, y'all you know, know, I get a lot of stuff from, from Timu, right? You don't, if you don't want to do Timu, you 
there's so many other options. For me, it's very affordable and I've been satisfied. So it's a personal preference. You know, it's a personal thing. So get your ferns. That's, that's the main idea is to just have some fern pieces if you want to do something close to this. But, you know, like I say, make it your own. So if you don't want to use fern, you don't have to. You could have stopped way back when you just put the irises in there. If that's what you want to do. Make it your own. Let it bring you some joy, okay? So I am just making picks because the end of these pieces are just wire. And they're not the kind of wire that you're going to be able to push down into the floral foam without them bending. It's a really light wire. So I'm just making my own picks and you can see how I do it. I use little pick pieces from other florals that I've cut apart. I just save those and they work great when you're doing florals to put down little, um, you can do little ornaments with those. You could do flowers, greenery, little signs. So I just keep them in a little box with my floral wire and my clips and, and things like that and it, it works for me. All right, so now remember we're gonna feed everything through so it's kind of in the front. And I love that wild look. It's so pretty to me. So this is why I use ferns and a lot of greenery when I'm doing my florals. I love woodland, I love rustic, forest. It's just so pretty. It's just so springy and near and dear to my heart. Hopefully, Pretty soon, the ferns will be growing in the um, on the side of our house in the property that's got like a water in it, like a little bayou or something back there. Hopefully, we will get some ferns growing back there, and I can share that with you and see how those wild ferns look because when they are growing in their full glory, they are stunning. They're beautiful. They're everywhere. It's really pretty. I mean, you know, if you dig that kind of thing. All right, so everything doesn't have to go straight up, right? No, it doesn't. Ferns grow in all directions, and I like to do a little something unexpected, of course. So I'm gonna add these to the front and just kind of thread them back and forth in here and have some hanging over. And then here we have one little piece all by itself. We're gonna poke that in there. Do not be afraid to move your florals around. They're on wire so that you can move them around, okay, until you get exact the exact image in your head or in your heart, you can go ahead and fix it like that. Now, I am going to add some more. I want to add more of this yellow. It almost looks like goldenrod, doesn't it? Which, by the way, drives my allergies insane, but they look really pretty in here. And I love a little unexpected. I think Ramon at home calls them flyaways. I believe that's where that term came from. And they're so pretty and whimsical. I just adore them in my florals. Yeah, these are cute. I'm moving everything around till it is perfectly how I like it. Mm, I think I'm going to add one more thing in here, but I really do like it. So optional, you can add a bow. I love this. This meshy stuff came from Dollar Tree in the garden section. I've got different rolls and different colors. I've used them in other projects. And it can be, a lot of people question how to use this. They don't know what to do with it. So I'm gonna show you what you can do that will fit perfectly into here. I'm gonna make a double layer bow. So there'll be four loops in here. I'm just gonna use a little piece of wire and just twist these together. And this is about probably mm, six inches across doubled over on itself and then I'm going to take another piece here and I'm going to make a tail I'm just going to fold it over on itself and then add the wire to it if you can do this in your hands and you can leave your tails on while you're doing this you can certainly do that but in the beginning I wasn't exactly sure what type of bow I was going to make so I cut it off but anyway here we go I'm gonna cut these just on a slant because I don't even think you would notice a dovetail because of the, all the cutouts in the ribbon. It's kind of asymmetrical, so one of the little tails is longer than the other. We're gonna reach inside that bow and pull the layers out. So now you will see the four layers. And it kind of reminds me of a four-leaf clover, right? Now this is just the inside where I started, so you're not even gonna see this. I wanna be sure that it is all that you can see the wood and the flowers through it. 
And now I can just take that wire and place it down into the foam. And then fix the tails. One down, one kind of going to the side by that fern. And that will complete the look of this hanging floral basket. I hope you like it. Hey, come check out my new videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. I'll see you in the comments. The next project is called Out on a Limb. All right, y'all. We're gonna take some greenery, whatever kind you wanna use. I've got some little plastic branches. You can also get a branch from outside if you want. I've got my finger sander or sanding block or a piece of sandpaper, a variety of paint brushes. I've got some pink cloud paint. This is a chalk paint, very pretty. Pink sky. Moss. And then these little birdhouses from Dollar Tree. This is a Melissa and Doug puzzle backing. These are great for working with. They are solid wood. We're gonna start by sanding our piece down. This is gonna be our background or our base piece. And you definitely need to make sure that you are sanding everything down. I get these at the thrift store. Um, you know, people donate their kids puzzles and toys because they're missing pieces, which makes it perfect for me because nobody wants to pick these up. After everything is sanded, and I sanded the wording right off of there, pretty much, I'm going to wipe it down to the cloth, a dry cloth by the way. Then I'm going to start painting. So I'll take the moss paint with a little bit bigger of a brush, and I'm just going to wipe this all over here. Now I'm let, I'll warn you about a sponge brush. They absorb a lot of your paint, and they'll hold it in there, and you won't actually get all of the use out of it. So I prefer to use a brush um, and big spaces like this so I'm not wasting a lot of paint. I'm going to go all the way into my corners and make a nice solid coat. Only one coat was required. We'll set it aside and let that dry and then we'll start working on our little birdhouses. Now I picked two different ones. These are the only two styles I could find in my store but we're also going to sand these down as well. Every edge, every side, every little area that we can sand we will be sanding. All right, and when it's done, you can barely tell the difference, but it's, believe me, it's a lot smoother. And then we'll go on to the next one. Go over all of the surfaces, especially around the little pickets there. They were kind of splintery. We'll take the back tags off. And I love it when a tag peels off smoothly, just like butter. All right, and then clean it off. I didn't have any residue, so I didn't have to worry about that. So I've got my dry cloth and I'm just wiping everything away. Now the new paints that I got, they were, they had, I guess, settled in the bottles. So I'm just gonna give it a good stir. And I also like to shake my chalk paint up as well. This one kind of gave me fits. So we're gonna start with the little heart birdhouse and I am going to start painting it. I gave each of the little birdhouses two coats. So you'll go ahead and know that. And what you don't see is painting the roof, that'll be a different color, and painting the front of the little garden area there on the birdhouse. I also go back and paint those the same color as the little birdhouse itself. So I'm going in here, look at this beautiful, beautiful pink. It's so pretty. It's, it's, giving, me it's giving me the 1990s right now. 90s vibes all the way. Remember the lipstick we all wore in the 90s? Yes, that's what it's given me. It is very, very pretty. It's like a dark, dusty rose if I had to kind of tell you what it actually looks like. Sometimes it comes across differently on the camera than it actually does, you know, the when I see it. <laughs> of course, I'm half blind and don't wear my glasses, so if that tells you anything. Anyway, moving along, I'm going to take this piece, which I pulled out of another arrangement. You can see it's still got foam on the bottom, but I will pick that off. And we are going to spread this out. I wanna start in the corner and spread it outward so it looks like we have taken a picture of a branch on a tree. I'll use some very shallow staples here to just help me put this in place, just the main branches here, just a couple of little spots so that I can be a little more 
free about where I put the houses when I get those ready. Okay, so I'm just kind of making sure I've got some areas that are flat where I can actually nestle those houses down in there. I changed my greenery over to this one because I think this dusty color is going to look better with the green I used in the background. And I'm kind of weird about my little matchy matchy stuff. So we want this branch to look like a spring blooming tree, okay? So what I'm gonna do is take these little leaves one by one, I'm gonna cut all these sections in half, and I'll take them one by one, and I can add them anywhere I want. All right, now, once those are dry, you can see the roof is gray, any gray color you want or brown, and I'm going to put fences around the front. These are just some pieces that I've thrifted. The one that's white, I think it's called snow fence, you can get those uh, at Dollar Tree. The brown one, uh, well, something similar to that at Dollar Tree. You're not gonna get the whole roll. I'm going to kind of measure by leaning it against there. And then I noticed that from another project that I did with the little birdhouses that you can fold one picket down and it's the perfect width to go on there. Now there's there'll be a little bit of gapping, but that's not a concern because you know, it's a fence. That doesn't even matter to me. But you see there how that fits? And it's wired, so you can just easily go in there after you press it down, just clip those wires, and you've got the perfect little fence to go in the front of your house. Now, if you don't have the little fencing like this, you can make something out of those little thin craft sticks if you wanted, or you don't have to do this at all. You could just paint them on there or just leave it like it is. Then I thought, you know what? This is so cute with a little heart. I've got some of this, it's called reptile scales. It's like a foam, bumpy row of stuff that I got, uh, I think it was 90 or 95% off at Hobby Lobby about a year ago. And I thought, you know what? We're gonna use that to trim it out. So now I've got my Gorilla Glue and I'm gonna put that down on the sides where it meets the sides of the house. Hold it down in place for just a minute. You know, make sure that it is gripped on there well before you go on to the other side so it won't pop off. Especially, like I said, it's on wire and you have a little bit of space in between the house and the fence there. So you just wanna be sure you hold it long enough. I mean, I edit that out. Nobody wants to see me hold something there for two minutes, right? No one wants to see that. So I'm just gonna do the same thing over here on this house. I'm gonna press that down into there and hold it in place. And then I'll go to the other side, put that in there and hold that in place. Now you see I didn't do the bottom of the inside. That's not necessary. We're gonna put something in there. I'm gonna put some greenery in there. Now I decided I don't want it to look like, I don't want the green to show through there, right? I want this to actually look like a little house. So if it's a little bird house, it would be dark on the inside. So I took some black velvet ribbon. It's just little scraps that I had. And I'm gonna use that in the back so that it looks like there's some depth in there. So it looks like it's actually a little house that you know, it's dark in there. You wouldn't see the little birdie's head right here anyway because they would be sitting in a nest on the bottom. So that's what I'm trying to emulate here. I'm just gonna put it down and then you can do the little sides too to make sure that it is height and dark there. And we'll do the same thing with the other one. Very easy to do. You can use felt here. You can use a scrap of material. If you like the little um, romantic look. You could even use a piece of lace here if you wanted to. Totally up to you. This was just my thing. All right, so now I'm going to kind of get my measurements just with my hands, and I know that I'm only going to do one of these little roofs in this little technique. I like the lines of the other roof, so I'm going to leave that one alone. It's going to be a little more rustic, and this one's going to be a little more cottagey romantic. So I'm going to cut off the pieces that I need, Trim that one piece down so that they overlap, or you could cut them at a slant so that you get a, you know, the right angle, but this works for me, so that's what I did. This is how my brain was working that day. Let's just put it that way. But you do what you need to do to make that fit. Then I'm gonna take some Adirondack white paint. This is chalk paint because it's thicker, right? And it dries faster. And I'm gonna go over the foam. I'm making sure that I get in between each of those little, they're actually supposed to be scales, right? Reptile scales. And then on the insides of each of those little places and on the outside. So anywhere I can get it, I'm putting it on there, except the back. 
because I don't want anything getting in between this glue and that foam. You've got to lower your temperature down on your glue gun to the low temp because you don't want to melt the foam, right? It's just foam. We don't want to melt it. And then we're going to just go ahead and put those trim pieces on there. I love how this looks with the little white fence. Y'all don't have a cut on the hand. That's actually some paint from the other birdhouse. So nobody be in distress. I'm totally fine. Now mine wasn't dry all the way, but you let yours dry all the way, okay? So now you can start kind of putting your tree together a little bit, just getting a little bit of greenery on there before you put your houses down. Because they're drying right now, right? We've put them aside, they're drying. I definitely want to cover up my staples. I do not want those showing. So you know, you start with that. I don't want to lay these flat down and completely put them flat against that board. We want to give it dimension and movement by having some of it glued down and some of it kind of floating or standing away from that backing. These are the things that you can do that just make your crafts and your creations have a little more interest, you know? But by all means, make it your own. All right, so I think I'm gonna put the little pink house. He's out on a limb over here. That's why I named this out on a limb because these houses are out on a limb. And since it's flat on here, I'm just going to add good bit of glue on the back and press it down. I don't want to get any glue where that fabric is right there because I don't want it to come out of the fabric and make a big nasty mess. You get that ghosting look. You'll see that white in there and I don't want that. Then since I know the space for the house, I can go ahead and add a few more leaves here on the bottom. And then I can go ahead and find where I want to put the little rustic neighbor. We're going to put him a little bit up north. I love the idea of the unexpected. So actually having this extend over the top of the backing is perfect. I love that. And I like that it is sitting between two branches, but supported. Okay. Now, because it is standing away at the top, we want to make that balance so that there's not a gap or it's not tilted. So I'm just going to use some of these little foam, I don't know what you would call these, foam, foam tape. And they'll give me a little bit of lift. And I'm going to do three of these. They have sticky on the back. They have sticky on the front. You just peel the little pieces off and you can get something very similar at Dollar Tree. And this will lift it up enough and help secure it on the bottom. So I'll get my placement right for that, kind of moving my branches. This is why we didn't want to staple those in place yet. And then I can press it down right over where I place that, those adhesive squares. Why can I not get that word right today, y'all? All right, so it looks good. It looks really good. And now we need to add a little hot glue right here. And because those pieces are like a foamy kind of squishy thing, they're a little forgiving. So you can actually lift up a little bit and put the glue right underneath that part of the house. I'm also gonna add a little glue on the branches so that it actually looks like it, its weight is supported there. I added another staple over here once I got my placement right. And then I'm just gonna start adding my leaves here and there. I won't let you, you know, be subjected to watching me put down every leaf, but I can kind of transition a little bit to show you the progress. And this one is kind of standing out there hanging over the edge of the backing. And I think that is so sweet. I really like that. If you got some little faux birds, you could always put those there if you wanted to. You see how long it takes to hold that? Yeah. All right, so on the back, this is a simple little hanger that we're gonna make. You to all my channel members, you help my channel financially so everyone else can enjoy free content. You can find info on becoming a member in the description box below. All right, so the next is going to be a burlap cottage wreath. Here is a little piece of scrap dogwood that I have. Got one more pick of this. Very pretty, very springy. I have some pipe cleaners and they are the same color as my wreath form. My ribbon. This is just the thin kind of ribbon that I got on clearance at Walmart. 
This one is from Walmart, but I'm gonna switch it over and you'll see that shortly. And then two different color rolls of burlap. They're not wired, of course. This ribbon that I got at the thrift store. Very primitive looking, right? But the green is beautiful. So here is the wreath form that I got from Dollar Tree. It is a 14 inch wreath. I am going to start adding my pipe cleaners down first because this is our support for our wreath. We have to have something to hold our pieces together. So we're gonna go on the inside and then on the outside. See, we're going to the inside two. We're gonna go two now. There's two rows in between, two. And then the outside two. This is gonna give a little more support when you're using burlap rather than using something thin like deco mesh. This helps hold everything firmly in place because it's a lot more to handle when you're using burlap than it is that thin deco mesh. All right, so now we have all of our pieces there and I'm going to layer these two pieces. Now, right now you can see the dark is on top and the cream is underneath, but I'm gonna flip it over because the way they roll and I want them to easily roll as I am pulling my sections up. Okay, so now they're flat down with the rolled section on top. And I'm gonna take my measurements. We are going to be using actually nine inch, no, 10 inch, that's 10 inch, 10 inch sections. I'm gonna start by bundling these in my hand, measuring down, and getting an idea of how much we're gonna use. I always like to do that first because sometimes I can use a little bit less. And in this particular wreath, I probably could have saved myself by using smaller sections, but it is such a full and beautiful wreath. I think you'll, I think you'll agree that it was the right move to put this many sections at this length. Okay, now I'm pinching it up just like you would when you use deco mesh and pushing it to the next one. So we're gonna do inside and then outside, inside and then outside. When you use an entire piece of pipe cleaner on here, you have plenty of room to get the thickness of that burlap in there, all right? Now, one of these pieces uh, or rolls of burlap came from uh, burlapfabric.com and the other one was one that I thrifted. So, that, and, and I do not know how much is on either one of these rolls, but if you do the math and you think, okay, there are 12 sections that we are doing poofs in and they are 10 inch sections, then that's 120 inches, then that's five feet. Wait, no, the math is wrong. What's the oh, the math idea? is so wrong. This is why I don't do the math, but you get the idea. You can do your math and, and get that. All right. So I'm going to continue around this entire wreath. You can see what I'm doing here. When you're first doing it before you fluff it out, it actually looks like everything is on one rung, but it's not. It's back and forth, back and forth. So we're back to our original spot now, and we're gonna measure out, but we're gonna go over an inch because we need to be sure that we have enough to wrap inside there before we cut anything off. Now grab some very sharp scissors and cut this burlap. So we got that extra little inch, nothing's pulling out and it is tightly, tightly placed in there. All right, so now you can see all of our little poofs and we can start to separate them. So cream and white, then white, well, cream and white, good grief. Cream and beige and then beige and cream. Cream and then beige. Beige and cream. So you're gonna do this back and forth all the way around so it looks like they are kind of woven around each other, okay? And this is what I mean by you could possibly have used either less sections or you could have used shorter loops or shorter bubbles. You know, you could have done it that way. You're gonna go all the way around and look at the fullness in this wreath. I love it. But you can make it your own, okay? It's so full already and we haven't even got our ribbon pieces in yet. So we're gonna grab those ribbon pieces and we're gonna do 10 inch pieces. And I'm actually going to be cutting 24 pieces of the 10 inch because we are gonna be using two in each bundle of this color ribbon, okay? That's how much I like it, yes. And this is not wired. None of the ribbon that we're using is wired. 
All right, so we're gonna cut all of our pieces and you see I changed to like a deco mesh looking ribbon over there. It's kind of a plasticky ribbon. And then I'm gonna cut everything into dovetails, except the cream color one on the bottom. All right, lots of dovetails. This only takes a little bit of time. Put on a podcast, watch a movie. This is so easy to do, okay? Get all of those cut. And I'm just gonna do slants on the end of these because some of us can't see and some of us don't have the dexterity in our hands to do tiny, tiny dovetails. So we'll just cut them at a slant. We won't worry about it. All right, now we're gonna start by making an X and we're going to put a piece of that other ribbon there, that meshy ribbon. We'll just call it mesh ribbon. And then we'll put this little piece of ribbon on top okay so we have two X's right we're gonna squish them up hold them tightly and squish them into the center and then you can just hold it in between your fingers I'm going to push it down into the wreath while I wrap it with the pipe cleaner pushing it down because I want it to be tight when you start fluffing these wreaths out like you know that are really got a lot going on in them you have got to have them fastened down tightly or you will pull something out. So I'm gonna give it even an extra twist of that pipe cleaner for good measure before I trim it off. All right, now you can put all these together and put them on and then cut off your wire or you can do one at a time. So the same process here, as long as I've got the bigger ones on the bottom and my smallest on the top, it doesn't matter which way you do your X's because they'll be fluffed out and they'll look like individual little pieces. All right, you see how I'm pushing it down and then pulling it tightly? I have had pipe cleaners to break on me before, but because I thrift so much, I'm not entirely sure what brand um, has done that. But recently, I haven't broken any. All right, so we're down to the last one now. You've seen me do a few and we fast forwarded and now we're down to the last one. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing as I would the rest of them, tight. Then I'm gonna twist it two or three times, tightly, three times. And then we can just cut that piece off. And I'm just using little jewelry cutters here, um, but you use whatever type of pipe cleaners, I mean, uh, geez, pliers that you have, or you can use, you know, if you have some kitchen scissors that you use, something like that, that can cut the wire and not destroy your blades, right? All right, so now we're fluffing. We are fluffing. I am going to fluff out that bow, and because the ribbon is so thick on here, and because the deco mesh looking ribbon is uh, has its own little body, they'll stand out there pretty much on their own. They kind of support one another and stand outward. Isn't that something you could say about life too? You support each other so you can really stand out. You want to get those good people around you in your life, right? Those are the good people in the comment sections who watch my videos. We don't deal with the negativity. We support each other. We stand up and support one another so that we can be who we truly are. All right, so I'm just gonna add the dogwood branch right into the middle, very easily done. I know that I want to add a little bow here, but you can leave this out if you would like. I'm gonna take that same ribbon from before that we used, and I'm just gonna fold it over on itself. Really, really easy. You could see what I'm doing there. You make the awareness sign, and then you mash them together in the middle. Just squish them up. And then you can just trim off the tails and take a piece of jute. I'm gonna use my jute, and I'm gonna tie it to the front. So what you're looking at now is the front of it because we're gonna layer some more pieces on it. We're just gonna go ahead and, and leave the tie in the front. Make a double knot so nothing slips when we're fluffing. Y'all know I'm a fluffer, you know this. I encourage you to fluff as well. Now we'll take our next layer. This stuff is so clingy. This also came from the thrift store. I love to use it in arrangements, but it is just like deco mesh and it clings to everything. It clings to itself, it clings to the other ribbon, it clings to your shirt. It, it's, you know, it doesn't discriminate. Now I'm gonna tie this one down right on top. It's just layering it, right? And we're just tying it right on top with the same exact cord. And we're gonna take the little one and do something a bit different. 
I am going to make some. This is going to be actually um, four loops in this one. So there's four little loops. I just folded it back and forth on itself and cut a section off so that we have tails. I'll put it down right in the middle. We won't worry about fluffing yet. Just make sure there's two loops on one side, two loops on the other side, and a tail on each side. And then we can tightly tie it off. And what I was doing pulling those loops up was just making sure that it was equal on both sides. All right, so now, those little pieces, if they had wire, they would stand out much better, but they don't. So we kept it very small, and we'll see what it looks like when we fluff. And go ahead and cut off that piece because we don't need it anymore and we can do something with these tails to make them pretty and I'm just gonna do a slant cut I'm not even gonna worry about dovetailing this part same here but I want this one to be a little bit shorter than the background it's just a very chunky little sweet bow it's not gonna be very big and then these pieces we're gonna cut off even shorter And fluff, 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 fluff. Fluffy, fluff, fluff, fluff. You could do five loops here. You can do two loops here. You know, and I'm self-taught. I know some people like to come in here and correct me on my technique and my method, but I think at this point, um, what I'm doing works for me, so I'm gonna just keep doing it that way. I'm not a professional. I don't claim to be one, but I like to show you that if I can do it, you can do it. So I'm gonna just take a piece of thin wire and I'm gonna use that to wire it to the wreath. Then I'm gonna push this down, this dogwood piece down, the branch. I'm trying to weave it through the frame underneath so the bottom has a little bit of support. So that's what you see me doing or struggling to do. And then I am going to take wire to hold that in place up top. Do a little fluffing. I want all my flowers to come up to the front part. I don't want any bald spots. And then I folded my wire in half, almost like a bobby pin and going over the wire. And then again, they come on wired branches. They're not plastic, they're actually wired. So I can move and push these around so that I get the fullness I like and that they are oriented in the direction I like. I want them all to face outward. And there she is. And you can just hang it right off of your, whatever type of hanging tool you have if it's a strip or whatever and here are the three projects oh our little fairy friends have found the section over there they found a little housing so here is the basket floral with the beautiful purple irises don't they look pretty with that white and yellow in there it just brings that darkness up a little bit I love it If you have not already subscribed, I would love it if you could do that right now. Be a member. If you want to be a member, you can find the information in the description box below. Watching the videos as a viewer and subscriber is completely free. If you've enjoyed the content in this video, I would love a thumbs up. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job, that you're enjoying what you're seeing over here, that you're leaving with some inspiration, and it helps me with further videos. Look at our little fairy friends. They're just sitting there. All I did on the inside is add a little moss and then a couple little sprigs of, you know, extra greenery that I had. And we have our little blooming tree here with our happy little fairies. And since they're not glued down, they can just fly away whenever they get ready. If you have some little foam birds or little miniature birds, you could put those there if you would like. I think that the wreath is gorgeous. Hey, y'all want you to know that you're not alone. And it's a good time to say this to you because sometimes we need a reminder. Sometimes we feel like everything is about everyone else and we just get left out. We don't feel like we're good enough. And I'm here to tell you, you are. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.